Safety is a commodity in this world. It can be earned, made, sold, and traded. When you have it in abundance, it is a luxury. And like any commodity, it can disappear in an instant. Vellum found a tiny shred of safety in an old magic bookstore, one with solid brick walls and a world of books to forget the apocalypse. However, without food and water, it cannot hide away in books forever. Welcome back to Cataclysm, Dark Days Ahead, the journey of Vellum, a magical apprentice who one day wishes to be an archmage. Vellum stepped downstairs. He had been hearing bumps and the crashes of zombies all night as he was studying, and eventually he was starting to get hungry and tired, so he decided to get down, step downstairs and try and clear some of them out because, well, the zombies, as long as we kill them properly, they don't come back. But he didn't expect to see this. There are, there's a feral dwarf, which you can see him perfectly in the dark here, and then about half a dozen zombies down here. Fortunately, this place is pretty dark. So the confidence that we can actually take care of this is pretty high. Probably shouldn't have done this at 7.30 in the morning though, because if we do have to run, we're going to have to run out style outside and someone pointed out that if we go to the underscore menu um we can choose a fighting style and go to brawling brawling is better than no style it's on lots as soon as you have like melee one and no style has no benefits brawling has only benefits so there's no reason to ever not have brawling on once you have it unlocked it'll make us just slightly better to hit and you can actually see the effect uh actually not yet because i'll have to i'll have to actually get into combat but we'll be able to see the effect of that pretty quickly as soon as we stepped out, this Feral, as per Feral's like to do, did in fact throw a rock at us. And because we are a dainty, dainty elf, we already have a bleeding wound on our left arm. But uh, we're not going to deal with that yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to close the door behind us. And we're going to run. And this is going to make noise, but I'm actually okay with this. So we're going to put the knife away, put it in our sheath and pull out our casting menu. And uh, I'm gonna make sure that my keybinds are aligned with what I'm used to doing. So I'm gonna put mana bolt on D. And we're going to mana bolt this motherfucker. Hitting him with 31 damage. It is loud though, it did 73 sound. Keep in mind that our usual like walking sound is five. I don't really know what the representation of how far away that sound is. Um, but with this many zombies, we can't hold back. In fact, do we actually have a I know that we had a whole bunch of, uh, okay, we don't have any wands on us because that would even be better. So we're going to hit him with another one. We're going to ignore the distractions. In fact, we're going to press I on this menu to ignore pop-up distractions while casting because right now we're only going to be casting the offensive spells. So we're not going to worry about it. We're going to hit him with another mana bolt. We're failing over and over again. Okay, he is almost dead. He is the biggest problem. The rest of them, we can use the darkness to our advantage. We're just going to magic missile him down and step into the darkness. And then we will pressure on our wounds. Bleeding stopped. That guy's down. Another, mana, another magic missile. Things outside are hearing us, which is why now we have a lashing zombie coming in here. We're going to step farther into the darkness and hit that guy next. So I don't know what that thing does. We're going to just deal with it. Um, I don't think it died. What happened? Oh, there it is. We were a little light blinded there. We'll go ahead and crush that thing down. And already we have this under control. There are more zombies outside. Sure. But most of them have our reanimated corpses. So you'll see that every once in a while you'll come across these zombies. that have like one HP, right? because they were reanimated at least this is my this is vellum's running theory is that these are the ones that were reanimated recently and um have already died um before so we are actually going to hit that guy back there to get rid of the reanimated one and we'll step back into the darkness here and blow this guy up and as soon as he gets too close which he's already getting too close we're gonna pull out the knife and finish him with a knife strike And already, 
like I said, we have this under control. We're running low on mana, but we'll take out that guy that's in the window. He was a reanimated one. There are much more zombies outside, apparently. Yeah, there's a few down, a few runners down here. They're already pretty hurt, though. And that zapper is 39 meters to the south. So that guy is not a problem with us. The only thing is that we're seeing him through the window. Whenever night comes, we'll probably take some time and we'll board up all the windows here and make sure that this place is a place that we can actually stay for a little while. And any zombies we see when we're in this area, we're going to want to kill. Oops, do I not have my thing out? I don't. I need to be more careful about that. There we go. He had grabbed me for a second, but we're fine. We're fine. That's what that little icon. So there'll be little icons around my character. The one in the top right there is them grabbing me, which is why zombies get scary is when they grab you. One of the whole reasons we came, we came down here is we made a nail board trap and zombies will want to knock on this door specifically because they'll heal me above. So we're going to go ahead and put down that nail board trap right in front of it. We're not going to be able to step in on it accidentally ourselves because if we try to, it'll ask us this. Do you really want to step on the nail board trap? And it'll default to no. So we're not going to step on it accidentally ourselves. Not very easily, at least. And once night comes, we'll take down all these bookshelves and we'll make more of them. This nail board trap should be uh, able to help us kind of like thin the horde on some of the zombies that will be coming because of the noise we make. Oh, there's a corpse here now. So we're going to go ahead and haul this corpse aside and we'll just put it in the center here so we don't forget to deal with it and we'll close the door here. She is over by the window with a fucking Winchester. I don't trust that. I'm really glad I closed all these windows because I can only just imagine that she would have come over there and been like, oh, there's zombies outside, blam, blam. And I started firing and just like, oh my God, please don't. You would attract... We're in the center of a city. You attract so many zombies right now. These hordes on the road are where Vellum has recently spotted large packs of zombies, which does mean that we have a lot of work to clear out our nearby area. We are going to rest until nightfall, and we will be back then. We slept relatively well, sleeping all the way from about 11 in the morning to 5 p.m. in the afternoon. Wow, Vellum really takes after myself. We are going to remember to uh, put away our knife. Go ahead, put it back into our sheath. Having a, something that we can sheath really fast, at least for the time being, is going to be a huge help whenever it comes to being a mage. And then we're going to not forget to take out our earplugs. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take those off. Did you blast out the windows? Please don't tell me you blasted out the windows. Uh, you might be a problem. Our door is stale, still standing, though. So let's walk up to one of these windows real quick and type in window into our construction menu, and we'll see how to board them up. We will need four planks. We have nine nearby. There is like a sits by sits radius of where it will gather crafting materials from. And we need nails. We're going to need a lot of planks and a lot of nails. So it's going to be four planks for windows. So we're going to probably want to board up all of the windows up here, especially if she's going to go around trying to bust them down all the time. Um, and again, we'll, we'll leave her here for now. I know Vellum knows that these heretical healers, um, like Lucio Abrams here, that are often found uh, running these magic shops, they're very zealous in their desire to uh, rid the world of, of, of zombies. So if we were to talk to her and ask her to help us, she would follow us around and help us kill, kill zombies. And she is fully kitted out. We can see that she has a bright helmet, she has a uh, armored motorcycle jacket, and she has a Winchester. The problem with that is that that Winchester is her weapon of choice. She's going to be very loud. If she didn't have a Winchester, I actually probably would accept her help and have her help me out. But as it stands, that Winchester is much too loud. So we are going to quickly organize our base here. And uh, we'll be making some noise, but we'll see if we can you know, drop some of the medicine that we don't actually need. We're going to keep our copper circlet on us because I really do hope to find... Um, Something in the something to uh, to to deal with the uncomfortableness of that circlet rather soon. We'll go ahead and put uh, tools here, uh, all of our general scraps here, and we'll put food, um, yeah, right behind our chair. Just trying to clear out our pack so that we have room for more things. And 
after clearing it out, I'm actually going to pick something back up. And I'll just pick up, I don't know, the cheese. I just want to keep some food on me. I always like doing that because there's always a possibility that we get isolated somewhere. We don't really need the rest of these desks, but we did put our guns over here on these two desks just because it looks nice. So we're going to go ahead and take down some more stuff here. We'll go to the construction menu, deconstruct furniture, and we'll take apart zombie spotted. Oh, it's because it's outside. God damn it. What are you doing, lady? Well, we have to, uh... We have to deal with this as soon as possible. So where are we on this window uh, thing now? It'll tell me even if I don't have everything. So I have enough nails. I have enough blanks. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and haul our planks and nails here. And then we'll haul everything here as well. And we're going to crouch down so that things outside don't see us while we're doing this. We'll crouch here. And we were going to board up this window right here. The thing stops seeing us when we're down here. Do we have enough to do it again? No, we need more nails. Okay. We will take down these bookshelves next. Just, again, ignore everything going on down there for now. Soon we won't have to be ignoring stuff all the time. Use of your powers has led to an insight. Interesting. Oh, it's because I have a light power going on right now, I think. Or perhaps this was just because I used a light power from most of, most of yesterday while studying. Rather than expanding space, you could collapse it, making each of your steps cover a larger area of ground, despite not moving more any more quickly, if you can figure out the proper method. Oh, that's actually my, my, my spatial stuff. Interesting. Okay, we don't need to crouch anymore. We at least have these covered up. They're only 95% cover, which means there is 5% of light coming in still. But that's not enough for anything to see us by. There is actually a pot here. We're going to grab that and put that over here with our tools because that pot is a great addition. Oh, we actually already had some pots. We'll drop our pots as well because we don't really need to keep them on us. It is a great addition to our cooking and things. We're going to start a fire real quick just to make sure we can't cook anything. We can. We made some vegetable sandwiches. We're going to make two of them just to have uh, food for now make sure you extinguish the fire largely because it's a waste it won't actually catch fire these fireplaces will uh, vent the smoke and also keep the fire completely in control so you don't have to worry about like accidentally burning down your house if you're using something like a fireplace um uh if you use a fireplace or brazier a brazier i can't ever ever remember which pr pronunciation is correct um if you ever if you was use one of those it's going to be safe so we do have more problems downstairs. It is 7 p.m. now. Oh man, we went to sleep without bandaging up our wounds. That's actually very unfortunate. We're going to ahead and do that now. Is there any sheets here? There are, okay. Anyone knows Cataclysm in the... Uh... Get in the comments and let me know why this is, but sometimes whenever I go to butcher sheets, to tear apart deconstruct sheets, Sometimes I get the, the necessary parts to make a makeshift bandage, and sometimes I don't. And I really, really don't understand that. It's like, they're all caught in sheets, right? So, like, why... Like, for example, this time it didn't happen. Why am I sometimes getting them and sometimes I'm not? I'm not actually sure what I'm doing differently. Because I play this game a lot on my own as well. And I do often take apart uh, curtains in order to make bandages. And then sometimes I just don't get what I need from them. Let me see what I have. So I have a, uh, I don't need to be carrying that saw around on me. That's actually a lot of weight um, and volume, even more importantly. Do I not have a pair of scissors? Maybe that's what it is, is that my character is preferring to cut them up with an exacto knife, which is just like cutting it up, not deconstructing. Maybe that's what it is. But again, if you know Cataclysm, get in the comments and let me know. Any advice that you guys have for me, um, anything you guys see me do wrong or anything like that, please, please, fe please feel free to get in the comments and let me know. Um, because I would prefer to know than, than not. And we are going to, uh, we have two planks and no nails. I really want to put more of these nail traps down before I continue boarding up windows. So we're going to take a moment and, uh, we'll be back at the end of this, but we're going to deconstruct everything around here that we can deconstruct. Oh, we need light. 
we're gonna use go ahead and use our candles glow uh psychic ability to kind of just produce light around us it saves on mana which is a very valuable resource as you guys have seen they are just busting out down there i'm actually tempted to see if now that we have full mana again you know what screw it that's what we're gonna do we're gonna take another uh whack at clearing out the downstairs one of them did die in our nail trap so that's good we got some caffeinated chewing gum. A bunch of stuff that we don't want to mess up. A multi-tool. Multi-tool is a very good addition. Um, it is one tool that has just a little bit of butchering, cutting, sawing, wood sawing, screw driving, and bolt turning all in it. And these qualities right here is what you're going to care about whenever you find tools. That is amazing. It's also very, very small, so we can keep that on us at all times. Other stuff here we'll probably take a better look at later, but there's nothing else there that is, is, is important enough that I want to grab it right away. We immediately see another feral, feral door. We're going to close this door, and we are going to start mana bolting that door. Oops. There we go. We failed twice, failing to get the concentration, because right now the main issue is that we have about a 50% failure chance. Once we practice this more, not only will it have more damage but our failure chance will be uh, will go up tremendously and possibly even the range as well we, we fail and fail again whipping the spell over and over again as he approaches but fortunately we do get it off and he's at the point where now um we're pretty much good and mana bolt is even louder than magic missile magic missile gives out a loud crackle mana bolt gives out an explosion noise Ooh. A leather belt with a crowbar. We are going to, instead of picking that up, we are going to immediately wear that. It says that our torso is very encumbered. Let's check um, what's going on there. So we currently have the... Oh, we ha we already have a, a, a duty belt. Okay. Which one's better? So we have the leather belt with the crowbar in it and then a police duty belt. Well, the police duty belt is actually currently in better shape. So we're going to go ahead and take that and then we'll just take the crowbar instead i didn't realize that we had already picked up a belt and we do have a collision with um the ballistic vest and the cro um and the cloak basically this menu here is a sort menu anything in yellow is informing us of issues that we have why do we have an issue in our hands oh because our ring of perception was under uh <laughs> over top of our gloves realistically speaking it's not cold enough that we need glove liners so we'll probably take those off at some point as well we just need to remember to do so we're gonna come over here into the darkness smash this corpse as well check it super fast we will get all these corpses into a pile and hopefully maybe find a mop or something at some point to clean out this downstairs area yeah there's a lot of zombies over here so we are going to take a step back with running and mana bolt this man. While we are fresh, we are faster. We're going to mana bolt the runner as well. We have already cleared out so many zombies here. What does this one look like? Um, He's pretty much full HP. And yeah, we're going to be messing up this place pretty badly by fighting in here. But at the same time, we're also clearing out most of our neighbors, which is very, very good for us. Normal zombie there goes down. Must have been one of the reanimated ones. There's some crystallized mana here, but we'll just remember it for later. And also, there's just like a lot of nails around here. We're going to pick up all the nails that are around us right now. Because they are kind of doing our work for us of uh, taking this stuff apart but unfortunately we kind of once Ooh, hey they took apart one of the cases that has a ma minor one of magic missiles we're actually going to equip that right now we did have them oh there's another one on the ground that's what it is okay so now we have between the one in our inventory and one on, uh, the one in our hand we have over 50 free magic missiles now if we run out of mana we will go ahead and start using those. So right now, because we're kind of like trying to clear everything out, we actually don't mind them finding us. We kind of want them to on some level. Uh, 
we see someone with a with a pair of scissors of some some kind. We're going to want to grab that for sure. Some more zombies in the streets down there. I'm still at the point of playing Cataclysm where I press the run button. So you're going to see me bounce through menus sometimes. It's because I've immediately realized that I pressed the run button. There is enough planks and boards nearby that if I wanted to, I could probably make... I could probably board up a window. I also can make a nail board trap. We're going to sit in the dark here and make a nail board trap real quick. Oh, it's too dark to craft. Can I do it here? We'll go ahead and put our thing in the inventory. And we're going to ignore the sounds of zombies, but we're not going to ignore it if a zombie gets too close. The light moved, so... Yeah, so it's getting towards nighttime, so the light is actually moving. Um, so we're going to have to uh, keep moving with it. Perfect. But we don't want to step into the full light. For us, we will easily be seen. So we do have a nail board now. We're going to go slightly stealthy here. We're going to activate it, and we'll put it down right there. And then we'll close this door. And we'll board up this door, but not this one later. In fact, we'll go ahead and close that door as well, just so that we have the silence of night here. Or the darkness of night here. We can get up to this spot without anything seeing us. We can crouch here. And let's see if we have enough stuff nearby. We do. So just go ahead and board up this window. It made some noise, but honestly, not any louder than casting our spells was. And because these are weak points, eventually we're going to want to try and put traps. I don't think we can put nail board traps on, on dirt. We have to put it on a solid object. But eventually we're going to want to put traps here. So if anything tries to come up and bash these windows, it'll step on the traps. Okay. Night has fallen. We're going to go ahead and rest for just like a minute here. Just to like kind of catch our breath. So we need to get to work. Um, How much food do we have? How much food and water do we have? That's going to be my first question. We'll probably move that nail board trap down there as well. Um, just because, uh, realistically speaking, I want to put all my traps outside for now. That one downstairs was just to prevent anything from coming in, paying us a visit while we were sleeping. Okay, so we have two things of water. So we only have enough water for like a day, really. Actually, we probably don't even have enough water for today. Do we have any water on us? We don't have any water on us. Is there any water around this place? We'll check in here real quick. Um, there is some water in here, so we can always boil that water. Let's remind ourselves, do we have anything to carry water in? We'll keep those nails on us, to be honest. Um, it does not appear like we have anything we can carry water in. We're going to have to put this crowbar down. It is useful, but for now, the hammer does have one level of prying with us. So the crowbar will be useful, but it's going to be very, very loud and very, very heavy. So if whenever we go on a, like harder loot trips, we might specifically bring the crowbar crowbar in order to like get into like crates and stuff like that um or to break in through windows that are that are locked but the problem is that it makes enough noise that we kind of don't want to mess with it right now we'll go ahead and grab these nails over here um okay so we need we don't need we don't need water we don't need food which does mean that we can spend the day today reinforcing our base which might not be the most exciting, but uh, we are going to probably just fast forward through that process. And uh, uh, if I come across anything interesting while I'm doing it, I will stop and let you guys know. Okay, we're back. We only did the upstairs windows for now. And uh, we actually, I just remembered, we actually very desperately need to do... Oh, nope. Don't step onto the spike board. We actually desperately need to do this window right here. Let's see if we have what we need. We don't. We need some more nails. Um, actually, just nails. So we should be able to find some nails around here somewhere. See if we have any nails. I don't see anything off the top of my head here. Um, it doesn't look like we have any more nails around here. So we'll go upstairs. Yeah, we really do need to pick up that spike board. In fact, we're actually going to disarm it and pick it up right now. No more trap. I don't want to be 
hurrying and then accidentally step on it. So we have some nails there and we have some nails here. So I want to get that window closed back up again and then hmm, two darts to construct. Okay. That's a little bit of a problem because this window is like right in the way. So we're going to do this as fast as possible. We're going to activate the candles glow. Uh, this is dangerous. And then we're going to... Did anything come to us? No, it did not. Okay, okay, okay. That was... That could have attracted stuff for a little while there. From a distance. And then... I think we're going to go ahead and stop sneaking. And we are going to wield the... Uh, the nail board trap. So that it's just ready to go in our hands. Open the door here. And... Uh, I'm not going to take the rest. I'm going to put the nail board trap away and we're going to take at least two zombies real quick. I'd like to do so with my knife if possible. How hurt are they? Oh, they're both reanimated. Because that is a much quieter. Only making about 48 sound instead of uh, the 70s of our spells. And uh, Vellum doesn't doesn't believe in himself to to not be able to step on these spike boards so what we're going to do is we are going to uh put our knife away oh, there's so many places where we can put it that's actually a little annoying because it's going to be easy to put it in the wrong place but we are going to go ahead and put another nail board trap here and then we'll board up this door because this will anything that like kind of walks through this area will step on these traps and they'll start bleeding and if they step on them again because zombies are stupid, they'll actually kill themselves out here. And every once in a while, we'll walk out here and see just, like, dead zombies. And it'll slowly clear the area. Because Vellum suspects that this area that these zombies don't actually... They're not being magically created in any way. This is just the population of the town. And if we can get through the population of the town, as, as daunting as that sounds, we will have some safety. We're going to take a quick look around, see if we can find anything to put water in. Because ideally, I'd like to make some of my water. Front room looks pretty clear, too. There's a hip flask there. An e-ink tablet PC. That actually is one of the best PCs to have. That will, let me show you, go ahead and allow us to, if we activate it, we can... Uh, store books in it so that we don't have to carry a whole library around with us. We can use SD cards to sometimes find recipes um, and we can use it as a light and we can even use it to read the stores, stored books. That is a very, very good find. We'll probably want another nail board trap by this front door as well and, by, and we'll want to board up this window over here and put a nail board trap there. The zombies are smart enough to go for the weak points. And then the rest of this building is made out of stone wall. It's very unlikely that normal zombies will be able to bust down a stone wall. Now, Vellum hasn't seen anything beyond a normal zombie. Maybe something a little weird has come up time and again, but nothing too incredible. But now that night has fallen, instead of sitting here and just ignoring the distractions, we are going to set out onto the street. Oops, I just accidentally... <laughs> wielded my bots or briefs we're going to put that away i because of my 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 character image there i actually thought that uh, i had a knife out but our knife is away so we're going to come out here and we're going to make a quick once around the house and see if we see anything very close by like that guy and we're going to just go ahead and get rid of all of the zombies that are very close by you target the zombie maybe i can't see him from here i will take a step closer why can't I target him? That's very strange. There we go. We'll just take all of these guys out real quick. Because our character and our elven ears were able to hear them over and over again. And that distraction... Oh, there's actually a nice little garden back here. That's very nice. That distraction was making it very, very hard for us to focus on our work. So we're just going to take out the stuff that we hear nearby... Super quick. Hoping that we can make it so that we can go ahead and work without concern about the nearby area. There's a zombie runner there. How's he doing? Not very well. So we'll go ahead and take out our knife. 
and get close enough that he approaches us, finish him off. Crush his top corpse down. Brainless, again, freshly reanimated, we'll get close and hit him out. This is definitely the ideal way. Oh, there's a little bit of a group over here. They're both very weak though, so we'll go ahead and be brave and step up. That one actually managed to grab me, but he didn't hit me. So that's good. Let's check their corpses at a cursory glance real quick. Feral human there. You're a problem. Go ahead and sheath our knife and uh mana bolt. Mana bolt. Mana bolt. And did I say mana bolt? There we go. I heard a clang. Can we tell where that came from? It must have been pretty far away. And then pretty loud. I don't see it. Northwest, we hear clang, clang, wump, wump, clang. Kind of sounds like maybe from the west now. What is this building? It's a very solid brick wall. It's far enough away that I think that um, we don't need to worry about that right now. From the west, you hear agonized crying. Oh, okay. Vellum is too curious. What could be crying? Is it someone alive or not? Maybe some sort of twisted zombie trying to draw us in. Is it in here? Try and pry it open with our hammer. We can't. We do see a book inside, and our voracious reader here is curious, but we do still hear the sound of clang from the northwest now. Perhaps an, something killed a zombie dog. That's never a good sign. There is a feral human here. Multiple hero humans. We're going to take a step back. Fortunately, humans can't see in the dark. Magic missiles go out, smashing into them. They're running from me. No, they're not. They're running towards something. We do have a tough zombie approaching us now. We'll go ahead and uh, send one missile down alley. Take him out very quickly. Another tough zombie, freshly reanimated. Crush the corpses as we go. Something is definitely pro getting these zombies to move a pretty good distance. We are out of mana now. Ooh, that guy got, really came around the corner fast. So what we're going to do is we are actually going to run off into the dark until that guy loses track of us. You can tell that he's tracking us because you can see that little exclamation point above his head. And we are going to take out our wand of magic missiles. So now we'll activate it and... Uh, the wand never fails, but it always does 17 damage, so it's not the best thing in the world, but it is very safe. And that's kind of something... Ooh, antibiotics. That's amazing, actually. If we get an infection, we have an answer for that now. The safety is what's important right now. I don't want to be taking... I didn't mean to stop casting. There we go. I don't want to be taking unnecessary attacks and unnecessary wounds when we are so fragile right now. Cataclysm's auto-targeting often has me target corpses that are recently finished. I don't spend a lot of time using range attacks, so I'm not quite used to that process yet. That is a full health zombie. We are not going to brawl with that thing. Bought our wand again. And yes, this is a little wasteful, but we can refill these wands later. Potentially. If we figure out how. I actually... Vellum knows that it is possible, but doesn't exactly know how. Um, ooh, that was a full lighter. That's pretty useful. Despite all the magic we have, we don't really have a way of um, starting lighters. We're also going to be grabbing these memory cards, because... I do believe we should be able to find some recipes that people like save for later and possibly some extra books on these memory cards. There's an MP3 player there. Do we already have one? We don't. We'll go ahead and take that. We can find some batteries. We can listen to some songs and it'll help us calm down. And being calm is actually incredibly important because as a as a wizard, our focus is our moment-to-moment -moment focus is very important. You'll find our focus up there in the top right. 
And it's very much affected by our mood. And if we... Ooh, those guys got... Era Military Zombie. I don't know what that guy is going to be about, so we're going to back up and a little bit more of the same. Actually, we're going to take out the Feral first. Yeah. Because the Ferals will die faster. That's why we're going to do it. This wand is almost out. This guy sees me again. Back up. We have amazing vision at night. And we are very quiet. Well, you know, when we're not casting freaking magic missiles. Um, I'll go ahead and put this in our inventory. And we'll take out our next wand. So we can use the advantage of the night to our advantage. And anytime they start to get close to us. We can just back off into the night until they lose track of us. And that works against any sort of humanoid zombie, but it won't work against things like elven zombies. Yeah, this, uh, this paramilitary guy is going to have a lot, isn't he? Yeah, he has a lot. A fully, a full ballistic vest. Oh man. That's really good. So we're going to go ahead and... Actually, we're going to go ahead and uh, just fully wear that. Oh, we can't because we're already wearing a ballistic vest, aren't we? Yeah, we're wearing a... I'm not sure which one of these is better. So we're just going to go ahead and take this for now. Let's see. There's an army helmet here, but it's a bad fit. But there are knee pads here. We'll go ahead and put the knee pads on, even though they are filthy. And Vellum is deeply disgusted at the entire idea of putting on a decomposed corpse's knee pads, but practicality is winning out over the desire to not be filthy and be sodden with the corpse's remains. And also we have the spell freshen up. As soon as we get back, we can get towards some soap and clean water and we can press the dissertation all of the dirt off of ourselves. That thought remi remains in the back of his head that we are but one spell away from being clean again. Even in the apocalypse. Oh, he threw a rock at us. What an asshole. We'll back up a bit so he doesn't do that again. Finish him off with some magic missiles. There are just so many here. But at the same time, this is worth doing. Because the more of these we take out now, the more won't be able to bother us at our home. Plus, it feels so good to be able to just cleanse the undead after our first horrible foray into the apocalypse. It feels like we have control over the situation for once. We'll check this house real quick. Of course, focusing on any books. And there's a pair of scissors. Hopefully that will help. We'll grab this uh, plastic bottle as well because if we find any water in here, we'll probably grab it. It's just one zombie by himself in a room. We'll take out our knife and practice some of our knife fighting. They do manage to claw at us, damaging our right hand, but we do take them down. It was just one fat zombie. They weren't that scary. If we catch them by themselves, we might practice our knife fighting here. He does manage to grab us, but we got so many hits off on him. Eventually, he goes down. I couldn't really handle how fast and quick we can be with this knife. We'll go ahead and take every book that's read. That means that this is a book we haven't read before and that it's not entertainment. It's just, um, it's memory cards, hell yeah. It's something informational. I don't know what this place is. Is this, it's a house, okay. I wasn't 100% sure if it was a house. And because of our current need, any nails we come across we're gonna pick up as well because you know what, they're pretty light. Oh, liquid bandage, multivitamins. 
Um, antifungal drugs. That's. It scares me that we might need to use need that at some point, and we'll grab any soap we find as well because that soap will allow us to uh, clean our clean any clothes we come across. In fact, we're going to go ahead and pour some water into this flaccid bottle. And is that enough water to cast freshen up? One water and some soap. It is. As soon as we're ready, we could actually just go ahead and cast that. Bellum is overly concerned to the point of actually it being neurotic about how dirty he feels right now, feeling these clothes on him. So he is going to step back into the darkness and with a few muttered words and a few hand signs, consume. Oh, we don't even have enough mana. Oh, that's funny. Oh. He was focusing on the spell only to realize that his energies are mar more than drained from the earlier magic missiles. He will have to deal with being filthy for just a little bit longer. We'll take any canned food we can find. Of course. Most of these kitchen utensils are not a high priority for us anymore. Although we do see a Dallin jug in there. We're going to unload the Dallin jug and just pour it on the ground and bring the jugs with us instead. Do it again because there was two of them in there. We have some sealed pickles. Not the best thing in the world. Ooh, some eggs. Very nice. It says that they're unedible because Vellum finds them distasteful in their current format. But we can do of them. Ooh, there's a bookstore right across and a hunting supply store. Okay. Before the night's over, we do want to check both of those places. We'll go to the bookstore first because Vellum's voracious desire for books is as per a sludge trail. That's not good. Pupating zombie crawler. This half of a human corpse is wrapped in sticky black fibers that cover everything from the neck down. Beneath the wrapping, there is a strange rhythmic movement, grotesque to behold. We don't know what that is per se, but it seems like this zombie has changed, evolved somehow. We're going to pull out our magic missile, and while we have it alone, we're going to see if we can deal with it. We hit it with a magic missile for 21 damage, and again, it seems healthier. It was healing itself. Oh man, that's not good. That one was regenerating. There's a thick sludge tail preventing us from getting to it. What happens if we step into it? I think it was just very slow. Yeah, it took us 15 seconds instead of the usual one second to step into that trail. We'll go ahead and crush it down, make sure that it never regenerates again. And, uh, oh, that's right. We were going to go to that bookstore. Easily distracted. Bye. Well, the living dead that currently own and occupy this world. Scrap aluminum. I don't think I need any of that right now. We're going to carefully move around. Interesting. Oh, this is the house. I accidentally misunderstood where I was, but this house is boarded up. That could mean that there's survivors in there, or it could mean that there's survivors who have failed to survive. We're going to go around the other side here. Go ahead and turn on safe mode so we can move quickly and come back this way and approach this bookstore. Moving down to the streets, we do see some zombies down south. Is that... What is that? Something in the darkness. And we see a zombie cop. That's not the greatest. They are a zombie, so they won't be sentient enough to use their gun. Their gun on us. But they are going to be covered in cop armor. We only have four magic missiles left. We're going to ignore it for now, and we're going to step into the bookshop. We have a brainless zombie, a zombie medic. Actually, we're going to waste a magic missile, take out the brainless zombie in the background. And then take out this medic as well. 
I don't like the fact that we only have one entrance here. These glass windows, in the worst case scenario, we can go ahead and break them. We're going to go ahead and put that away. And we'll take out our knife. But now that we're down to our knife, our desire to fight is definitely being very lowered. If possible, I'd like to sort of just find any books that we care about in here. Most of these point pink ones, they are just... Um, Ooh, a restaurant guide. That will actually give us some information about the map. But these pink ones, these are uh, fiction. So they are... Int Ooh, int the Janner's Guide to Magic. There's possibly a spell in there that Vellum has not already learned. But these fiction books are good for getting our mood up, but they're not actually going to be something that we care about reading long term. We don't need two issues of ham radio. We'll go ahead and pick up all of the actual informational books. Because who knows what we're going to need and want later. And there is more here, but we are already out of room in our backpack. Probably because of all these magazines that were already in this backpack. Where did these come from? I don't remember picking these up. Uh, we'll go ahead and keep them on us, I guess. Oh, you know why we're so it's so heavy? It's because of this ballistic vest. That's right. Hmm. Do we have enough spell a mana to cast freshen up yet? 72. We're very close. Check the bathroom real quick. Don't see anything in there. Check the back area. Maybe they have snacks. They do, but nothing that is appetizing to us. And a military rucksack. This moldy assault pack is actually very um it's very uh, high quality. So we're going to probably actually keep this over top of the military rucksack. Um, although the rucksack would be nice if we ever, like our backpack ever got tore apart. Ideally though, this is this is the apocalypse. Ideally we would want to eventually learn how to repair our stuff. There is actually a lot of interesting books here. All that can teach us various skills and possibly even have various recipes in them. But as it stands, we have completely overloaded ourselves and this is the first night of what we hope is going to be many nights of being able to fearlessly step out into the darkness where the dead live and not only did we survive not only did we come back with minor injuries we actually came back with a net positive we have food we have books and we have potentially some more armor with that, this is going to be where I'm going to leave you for today. Bellum's journey is far from over. He has only managed to make the first steps on his journey. We are going to want to be checking out any magical place nearby because his desire for knowledge and his desire to learn new spells is still very unquenched. These wizard towers up north, we're going to have to move back on at some point, but we're going to be, need to be ready for those. Vellum knows what is inside a wizard tower. He's toured them before. They are going to be filled with golems from edge to edge. Anywhere from a dozen to three dozen golems can protect one tower as these wizards work alone but outsource their daily chores to their golems. Those golems will still be protecting these towers to this day because they regenerate and nothing as small as a zombie would easily be able to take one down. We're going to have to have a plan in order to perform the heist upon those. But this has been Cataclysm, Dark Days Ahead. I have been Arima. If you have been enjoying this series, please feel free to leave a like, comment, and or subscribe. It is what keeps the series going. I am going to be making 10 episodes of Cataclysm no matter what happens. We are on episode 4 and look forward to more to come. After the 10th episode, I'm going to be making a decision on whether I'm going to keep the series going or not. So please lend your support. I hope you have a good day and goodbye. Bye.